There's this beautiful luminous tapestry of myth about Merlin, the great wizard, but there's a hole right in the middle of it about what he was like when he was the same age as you, or you, or you. Where did Merlin come from and what happened to him that made it possible for him to become this great exalted storied wizard? When I'm leaning forward wondering, what is the answer to that question? That's a question I know I can only answer by going up into my writing room and just trying to think about as a writer, as a storyteller, and let Merlin perhaps whisper the answer to me. So that's what really began me on this journey. And I realized that when he begins his story, the first thread in that tapestry is the farthest thing possible from a wizard. It's a boy who washes ashore. He is half drowned, he is barely alive, he's so weak he can't even open his eyes. And he doesn't know who he is. He has no clue where he came from. He doesn't even know his own name. And yet, down inside he has something magical, something great. And he has to just discover that. Now this isn't to say he's not gonna make lots of mistakes and do some really stupid things. He does. He has to overcome his own flaws, his own vulnerabilities. And that's why at the very end, when you meet the great wizard Merlin, he really understands humanity. He really loves humanity. But that's in part because he understands humanity's weaknesses as well as our strengths, because he's lived them himself. That's why Merlin reaches across all the boundaries of his day. It's incredible that this character is a druid master who teams up with a young Christian king to build a whole new society based on justice. This is the character who can talk with the nobleman in King Arthur's court just as easily as the peasant on the street. He can talk to the gray wolf on the hillside just as easily as the Archbishop of Canterbury. That's Merlin. He builds bridges. And that's one thing I think people have always loved about him. The other thing is that Merlin stands for the sacredness of nature. Nature is Merlin's greatest teacher. He's always learned his greatest lessons, his deepest truths from storms, from running with the deer, from swimming like the fish, from flying as an eagle would fly. Those are the ways that Merlin grows and he teaches us to think about our connection with the natural world. And here we are at the beginning of the 21st century and we have lost a lot of that understanding and that closeness to nature. Merlin reminds us just how important that is and maybe even that we can do it ourselves. So my greatest wish for all these books is that when you're done you'll feel like Merlin really was a lot like us. He was human. He had flaws and he also had greatness. He had the ability to reach for the stars. <laughs>